guys, today I'm going to be doing a book review on The Deep by Alma Katsu. In The Deep by Alma Katsu, stewardess Annie Hebley knows that something is haunting the passengers on the Titanic. Strange things are happening that no one can explain. Four years later, after having survived the sinking of the Titanic, Annie finds herself on the hospital ship Britannic. She comes across a wounded soldier who she thought had died on the Titanic, which causes her to reawaken buried feelings and painful demons from her past. The Deep is a novel about people with secrets and hidden agendas, and how the choices they make eventually come back to haunt them when they least expect it. Oh boy, you guys, this book. Let me start here. This was definitely like one of my most anticipated books for the year and it kind of let me down a little bit you guys I'm a little upset about that it let me down a little bit um I guess as a, a disclaimer this this book I'm gonna have a lot of negativity in this this video about this book because I definitely had some problems but weirdly enough I mean I I still kind of like the book it, it's it's one of those books that it's, it's okay to like it. It's okay to have some fun with it and just go with it. But yeah, you also just need to kind of recognize that there are just some little issues and flaws to the narr to the narrative, I suppose. But still, I, I, I had a good time with this book for the most part. It was okay. I did like it to some degree. Um, but yeah, I am definitely going to be focusing on more of kind of my, my negative feelings more than anything because yeah there were just certain things about this book that was just really poking at me that I was like I can't take this anymore uh but yeah this book it was one of my most anticipated um and it did it, this it had so much potential you guys this book had so much potential I feel like but by the time you got to the very end of the book it felt like it just kind of fell apart and it's like it's like what happened <laughs> it's like what happened that this book just and fell apart out of nowhere because by the time you get to the ending it, it felt just really silly and over dramatic and over the top and and, and really absurd um, it was just really crazy um, something else you need to know about this book just kind of reading the synopsis you you may sit and read the synopsis here on the flap and you may sit and think to yourself oh my god this sounds like a scary book it sounds like a horror book um this book it, it's it's not a horror book um because i know some people have a hard time reading books that are scary this is definitely not a particularly scary book i'm i it has some moments that might be a little frightening but it it doesn't really have anything to do with scary moments. Nothing like pops out at you out of nowhere, you know. Um, it is, it's more of a suspense, I guess. It's more of a suspense and kind of a bit of a mystery. Um, it has a lot to do with spiritualism because during this time period, spiritualism would have been a huge thing, you know, people wanting to perform seances and talk to ghosts and whatnot. Um, that's kind of more where this book lies is kind of the idea of spiritualism and characters either believing in that or not believing in it. So yeah, it's not like a typical scary book where you're going to be like, oh my god, I'm scared, I need to hide, I need to hide behind the book, you know. Um, so yeah, don't worry, if, if you're someone who doesn't like horror books, this book, I wouldn't really say it's that type of book. So like I said, this book had a lot of potential. I really enjoyed kind of the initial pages of this book, you know, probably probably a good 25% of this novel, I was really enjoying the first bit of it. Um, you get introduced to our main character named Annie Hebley, um, and you have two timelines. You have a 1912 timeline and a 1916 timeline. So with the 1912 timeline, that's where you get everything going on with the Titanic. And one of our main characters, Annie Hebley, She's a stewardess or a maid, and uh, she has, you know, kind of a batch of first-class passengers that she's taking care of. And, of course, the sinking of the Titanic happens, she survives, and then four years later, when we meet back up with Annie, Annie is now in, like, an insane asylum, essentially. She's been kind of going through some issues and problems and inner demons. Um, so she finally leaves the insane asylum and she gets on the Britannic, which was like the sister ship of 
the Titanic. And the Britannic has now been converted into a, a hospital ship because at this point World War One is going on. So the ship is picking up wounded soldiers and Annie is now a nurse helping these soldiers. And it's here that uh, one of the wounded soldiers that comes on board, she recognizes him as a, a former passenger on the Titanic. And this is a man that she kind of had a bit of an infatuation with. Um, so in both timelines, um, especially the 1912 timeline with the Titanic, being on the actual Titanic, um, Annie realizes some, some strange things are going on just some weird occurrences. She herself is having some hallucinations. She's having, having trouble sleeping. There's just a lot of really random weird things kind of going on that shouldn't really be going on. And to make matters worse, and this is kind of where the book starts to get really extreme and over the top, you guys. At, at one point very early in the book, Annie stumbles into one of the first class uh, rooms and here's a bunch of first class passengers having a seance, you guys, having a seance on board the Titanic. And then just a little while later, after the seance, this, I'm sorry if this is a spoiler, but I need to make a point with this video. After the seance, all of a sudden, this poor innocent little boy just winds up dead out of nowhere. So this is what I was talking about. This book, it, it, it starts off really promising. And I did, I initially loved the setup, you know, I liked, I, I do, I, I really liked the back and forth. I liked going back and forth with 1912 and 1916, following Annie, you know, as she's on the Titanic and as she's on the Britannic, and how, you know, things start to kind of connect and weave together with the narrative. But yeah, where the story just kind of fell apart and started getting over the top and absurd, it did. It started with this seance. Yeah, guys, and I just don't know how I felt about that. It just, it was like, wait, what? <laughs> There's a seance. This poor boy dies as a result of this seance, I think is what happened. I'm still a little confused. Um, and it's not just that. It's also the, it's, it's the passengers. If you're familiar with the story of the Titanic, if you're a diehard fan like me, you're going to recognize these big, huge names. These are real historical figures. You have characters like John Jacob Astor and his wife Madeline Astor. You have Benjamin Guggenheim. You have Lady Duff Gordon. These are huge players on the Titanic, and some of these people tragically died, or, or yeah, their life kind of sucked afterward after the sinking. Um, these are huge historical names, and you're, if you're a fan of the Titanic, you recognize these names. And these are the exact characters, these historical people that are participating in this random seance, and it just kind of felt a little absurd to me. To make matters worse, these real historical figures, they come across as caricatures of themselves, or even parodies may I dare say. Um, and that's not a good thing. When you're reading a historical fiction novel that's dealing with real people, you don't want them to come across as parodies or caricature caricatures because it's doing a disservice. You know, it's doing a disservice to these real people, especially some of these people who, of which died during the singing. And it is, a, it, it kind of just really threw me because when I first started reading this book, I was like, oh, this is so cool, because Annie, Annie is one of our main characters. She is fictional, and there are quite a number of other fictional characters in the book, but as I was reading, and some of these historical names had chapters, you know, they had character point of view chapters, um, like Lady Duff Gordon had some chapters, Madeline Astor had some chapters. I was just really thrilled and excited, because I've never read a historical fiction Titanic novel with the historical people kind of having a point of view, you know, because a lot of times they are in the background as a supporting player. So I was initially very excited, but as, as soon as I was done with this book, one of my first thoughts was, I don't think the historical people should have had point of view chapters. I think they should have remained supporting minor players, like maybe popping up as a cameo or an easter egg or whatever you want to call it. I think this book should have strictly been focused on fictional characters, because 
I, I, I do, I seriously think that was my problem, was the use and function of the real people, and it did, it felt kind of awkward and strange, and they, like I said, they felt like parodies and characters of, caricatures of themselves. Uh, for crying out loud, once again, I'm sorry if this is a spoiler, but I need to make a point. At one point, um, Madeline Astor, the wife of John Jacob Astor, who was the richest man on the ship, Madeline Astor, at one point, she kind of gets paranoid, because she, she herself is also kind of hallucinating and imagining things, and at one point, she thinks that she has to drown Annie, you guys. She thinks that she has to go and drown Annie, because she thinks Annie is possessed by, like, some demon of some sort. And it's a very crazy, weird scene, you guys. It's, it's things like that, how the real historical people are used. Madeline Astor, I am very 100% positive she did sit and take a maid and go try to exercise a demon from her in the pool. It's ridiculous. Do you see, do you see what I'm trying to say? It's just little things like that. It's just so ridiculous. And they use the real historical people and it doesn't make any sort of logical sense and it, it does, it comes across as really awkward. <laughs> so yeah, Madeline Astor is just insane, which I was really upset about because I was really looking forward to some point of view chapters from her. John Jacob Astor comes across as an idiot. Benjamin Guggenheim just comes across as a man whore. I mean, he probably was back in the day, but still, it's really extreme in this book. And then Lady Duff Gordon, you guys, she was a secret lesbian? What? <laughs> I, I even got all, I even looked up some stuff about Lady Duff Gordon because I was like, is this something that was true? Were there rumors and suspicion about Lady Duff Gordon being a, a lesbian? But everything I kind of looked at, there was nothing hinting at that. You know, she was just a fashionable, popular women's clothing designer and that, that's all everything kind of kept saying. There was nothing suggesting that she possibly could have been a secret lesbian. So then, yeah, even that kind of threw me like, wait, what? <laughs> It's just, it was a lot of, it was, a, there was a lot of weird things going on in this book, you guys. A lot of unnecessary things, I guess. So, like I just mentioned, I really would have preferred the historical people to be minor supporting characters and for Alma Katsu to have just focused on the fictional people. Because the fictional people I didn't really have too much of a problem with. I really like the character of Annie Hebley, as you know, because we, we are seeing her point of view from 1912 and 1916. She's kind of one of the main focuses. So I did, I really liked her story. And then, yeah, the wounded soldier, Mark Fletcher, who, he, he was also a, t uh, a passenger on the Titanic. I really liked uh, Mark Fletcher's story. And then I also, two of my favorite characters were probably these two characters. They were boxers on the Titanic. They were boxers, but they were, like, trying to con all the rich people out of their money, essentially. Um, I love the two boxer characters. They were hilarious. Uh, their story was also very tragic. Um... And yeah, once again, fictional characters. I loved all the fictional characters. I didn't have a single damn problem with any of the fictional characters. It, my only problem was that I wish their stories had been fleshed out a little bit more instead of giving points of view to the historical people, which their chapters ended up being just really weird and crazy. So you guys, that is it for my, I don't know, rambling negative review of The Deep by Al Makatsu. I don't know. Um, like I mentioned at the very start of this video, there were elements of, the, of this book that I, I kind of really liked and appreciated. Um, I, I really liked the fictional characters. I really liked kind of this, this possibility of a ghostly, vengeful ghost possession sort of thing kind of going on, but I wish it had only been happening to the fictional characters and not the real people. Um, I also really liked the back and forth with 1912 and 1916, and I also just liked s some chapters just with the Britannic in general, because there's always so much focus on the Titanic and never enough given to the Britannic, which also had a very tragic end. Um, so yeah, this book is just very 50-50 with me. Um, I'm not even sure how to recommend it. I mean, if you like all things Titanic, maybe go for it. It's kind of up to you. Uh, but yeah, you guys, that's it for this video. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye, guys.